And the cage, thank you, because you for tuning to uh, Noise Singing the 20 Bits. Filled a gulp, except for the new Gilla. All right, let's see. Legion. <laughs> <clears throat> I really hope they do well with this Gilla. Whoa. Whoa. That's Whoa. Whoa. There she is. Hey. Hello, That's everyone. different. What the hell Welcome is that? Welcome to uh, this special Dead that by Daylight couch and that stream. wallpaper. What is special about today is the first time we're going to introduce you to the chapters before it's out. So today with me, we have Dave Richard. <coughs> Hello. Hello. What do you do on Dead by Daylight, Dave? I'm the creative director. Awesome. And, and he wasn't, Louis was McLean? he? He actually Hello. became the creative director later on. What do you do on Dead by Daylight? <laughs> I'm a gameplay programmer. Thank you. If you remember. And uh, sure I am not queen, community manager on Dead by Daylight as well. So uh, before we go into Everyone's more from details, fucking Montreal pretty uh, much. Let's roll game out what we, uh, it's very creative what we push out this morning. Place. So I think we had a CGI trailer or something. Let's watch the trailer. That's what. This is what we're seeing in it. Rex, thank you for the two month you get to keep cameras and the cage thank you for the opportunity. Once again, shallow. <clears throat> I wonder who she's supposed to be. Uh, true love, Kyle, uh, true hogs, cat hogs. Thank you, Rex. Ah. ah. He's pointing very well. appreciate cool. it. <laughs> I think that uh, there was already a lot of reaction with this, uh, this short trailer this morning, but you're going to know a lot more today with us. So I would hope so. I think we're going to jump right in. Let's do it. Let's talk about. Hmm, what do you want to talk about first? I think uh, we should talk mm. about the lore. The lore? The lore. The lore. I mean, everybody needs to know where uh, the plague uh, comes from. What's the idea behind it? OK, so okay. where does she come from? OK, Let's so um, we, well, we spoiled it uh, a couple of streams back. We wanted to go <laughs> you know, far in the past uh, with, uh, with this chapter. We wanted to establish that the entity can uh, take Fall killers and possible. survivors from any time period uh, or world, really. Uh, so uh, the High Priestess uh, Adiris, uh, so the plague, is from uh, Babylonian time, so uh, you know, uh, far BC uh, even. Uh, I won't establish exactly where it is, I'm not sure. Uh, so um, Adiris' uh, story is one of our tragic uh, killer. Uh, so when she was very young, she was abandoned uh, to a temple uh, where she served. Uh, so cleaning, uh, serving food to the priests uh, and the priestess. Uh, and with time, she, she, she grew in the devotion uh, of these That's gods. Quite nice. she, she, her fate was building. Um, and uh, later in her life, Thank when, you the a, when the Boom. plague uh, Thank you, table. Uh, appeared in, uh, in the city, and uh, there was a, uh, even the, 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 the priests there uh, uh, contracted the plague well, and died <laughs> she took the role of high priestess uh, to support the entire city. And of course, as this symbol, uh, the, the, the entire city, uh, the townsfolk, uh, really uh, went with her and, uh, and a devotion, a strong devotion, as uh, the, a savior, basically, to the entire city. So um, we always said we were not going to do any religious killers. You so the, where the, is the plague um, uh, place in that, you know? Yeah, I mean, um, personally, I always wanted to do something religious. <laughs> I think it's a strong team in horror. Uh, but like the idea of this killer was to be smart with it. And we went more with mythology mm -hmm. than uh, actual relig religion. Not any specific religion. N no, exactly. Uh, I mean, going so far in the past uh, is, a, is a safer route um, to talk about cult and religion, uh, which is, I mean, it's a strong mm -hmm. fantasy. And I think it uh, deserved its place Does in the uh, game. All right, so no, a lot not. of people are talking about her weapon. Mm. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what, it, what is it? So uh, we, um, the, yeah. the incense burner is our weapon. Uh, we it was quite uh, challenging to build, actually. So we wanted something um, ritualistic, huh. uh, something truly unique, um, and something that has this um, uh, mystical aspect to it. So uh, the incense burner is uh, She's got a gen thing. for all of this. All right, awesome. Um, 
how about we go and see a little bit about the map? So what's happening on the map? Where is Did it you situated? Spray what's something? the atmosphere in it? So All right, so uh, we'll just to complete something. our story, oh, yeah, it's something sorry. that uh, we see you in... See uh, we had her at the top. How did she get here? Yeah, exactly. So uh, the important part of her demise, demise of the faithful, is that uh, she believes so strongly in her gods that it's going to be her demise. So as anybody else, she will con contract the disease, the plague, and eventually uh, she and a following um, go into, uh, well, travel to get away from the city, and they eventually all die of the plague. And um, her last moment um, is a prayer, so she asks you know, her gods uh, to help her, and the entity is going to be the one that answers her. Oh. Um, so this is, uh, this is how sh we come to the map. Yeah. So the map, like uh, many other places in the game, is uh, a reimagining of the entity of a temple in uh, which uh, Adiris uh, okay. so was uh, well, doing her rituals. Um, so that. it is now located in Red Forest. So it's, uh, you know, it's the, the, the two teams have been mixed together. So the entity is basically rebuilding a place of devotion where, um, so it's taken straight that out of the memories okay. of the plague. Um, wow. So it's a really cool map. Uh, like the, uh, the main building, the temple, is, uh, is gorgeous. Um, there is, so this is the interior, one of the level that we see right now. There's, a, there's multiple level. There's a crypt underneath the temple. Of course, there's a gen there. Mm. <laughs> the so, lockers really fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's talk about uh, the onion. Oh, so yeah. we, we had a, um, yeah, a teaser early, early on, and a lot good. of people made, uh, made jokes about the onion. So do you want to just tell us what it is? is yeah, the now. onion is an incense burner. Okay. So you'll see that just like the one she, uh, she has uh, as a weapon, there's an uh, incense burner all over the map. So basically she used the incense one. to uh, camouflage the uh, pestilence that comes with the plague. So is there anything that is special to this map? For example, in uh, the game, uh, when you, when you uh, start a generator, uh, doors are going to open. So is there anything close to that in this map as well? Yeah, the temple has uh, some like uh, entryways that will basically open once the generator in the, in the crypt is uh, repaired, uh, drastically changing the layout of the map and how it's played. It's interesting this time. Uh, the building that. itself is, uh, has a very interesting layout, so this is going to be interesting to see how players uh, strategize in it and around it. Awesome. Um, okay. I, are we are done we? with the map? I just don't. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> okay. we're done with the story. Awesome. The <laughs> okay, so let's get into it with the killer power. That's right. What so really everybody wants to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this other stuff is cool it's too. Most but yeah, you're right. Okay, so the, the killer power is called the Vile Purge. And I think we saw yep, a big there it is. Of it earlier, but there it is. God. So this is this killer vomits. <laughs> it's killer vomit. This, this is the, this is the vo the vomit killer. There you go. Uh, D Dwight seems to not have a good <laughs> time either. No, no one's having a good time about this. So uh, this this power has has a, a few parts. There's the vomit itself, which uh, creates sickness in the survivors uh, as they get vomited on, or once they become infected by the vomit. Um, sickness grows depending on what you do. Running, exerting yourself, doing interactions will make you sicker and sicker uh, until you become, I don't know what the current word for it is, fully sick, which uh, really weakens the survivor. Um, there's, as you can see, objects that get infected by the vomit. So you can actually run around and vomit oh. all kinds of stuff. So you and can that get will, other people that will with sicken it. survivors who interact with it. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, and once they're sick, survivors have only one way to cure themselves. Which is by using the pool. So the longer of the chase goes, which you can the see more right things there. Which we'll refer blue, from now on as fountains. And then that fountains. can make other people yeah. who go through it get uh, sick. Don't call them magic fountains. These are the pools of devotion or fountains. That's kind of interesting. Uh, the, uh, the fountains are really interesting because they also this heal game survivors isn't just when they, on they use them. It isn't. And so you, you wonder, win that well, way that seems like it's pretty easy for survivors to deal with. It's all about You use a fountain. But there's another aspect to the pool of devotion, which is that the killer can use a fountain that has been corrupted by survivors. Uh, to gain her own power and to gain the corrupt purge, which I'm not sure if we have the footage of, but the corrupt purge uh, damages survivors who are touched by it. So it really changes the dynamic of what she'll use the vomit power for. Hmm. It's really interesting. There's this choice as a survivor to 
um, well, first of all, spread the sickness. So that's well, not really a choice. It's something that happens. Mm -hmm. So the choice of using the fountain to heal, but also being able to give that ultimate power to the killer right. or living with uh, the sickness, which is not good which at is, all. Which is difficult. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the vomit was, a, was an interesting technical challenge. As you can see, it looks pretty awesome here, and I guess I'm just tooting my own horn because I was, <laughs> I was the one who was working on the vomit mostly. Um, but you'll, you'll find it's actually really fun to play with and to throw these streams of vomit across the map and to infect generators and pallets and survivors and watch their hilarious reactions. <laughs> was it very different to make than the, uh, the hatches, for example? Well, it's built on a lot of the same technology to be honest. Uh, and then there's lots of Did you interesting not hear behind the scenes magic the that turns a projectile into a string. Once they use them, uh, which turn into something into stronger for yeah. the killer to grab, and All then right. he actually gets so, um, injured vomit. So with the, the killer in, the, in his power, there's also perks coming with it. I'm sure people are, are I'm, I don't even see chat, yeah. but I'm sure they're all asking, does she move at regular speed? Yes, right? that's don't, probably a question I, I that's coming I knew back. it. Don't worry, chat, she moves at regular speed. <laughs> Is she okay. slowed down when she's charging her power? Uh, at the moment, she slows down when she charges it, but then once she's holding it, she goes back to full speed. Okay. These are see, these are details that are actually still being fiddled with. This is a lot of the stuff that we would like to see reactions to in uh, PTB. We'll we'll talk about that later. Yeah, people really dislike 110 percent right. because they don't allow you to look. So, well, dark devotion. Sorry. All right. Okay, so uh, the first perk of the plague is dark devotion. Do you want me to read it out, or do we have it here? <laughs> well, we, we, see, we see the footage, right? You can describe it. You can read it. Go ahead. Uh, all right. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. The uh, display of your powers creates a whirlwind of panic that spreads throughout the land. You become obsessed with one survivor. Hitting the obsession with your basic attack causes the obsession to admit a 32-meter terror radius for a few seconds. Ooh. During that oh. time, your terror radius is reduced to zero. The effect can only be triggered with a cooldown. I'm being a little bit elusive about the exact numbers. Don't worry, guys, you're going to get them soon. Okay. Uh, and the obsession does the cure the terror radius they admit during the duration of the effect. So uh, this is actually it's a really cool, cool perk. but it's only cool you if the terror radius lasts a long time. You put your terror radius on the obsession like seconds, for a few seconds when you hit them. So it as isn't, killer, you seconds. don't have the terror radius anymore. That's right. That's it. It is transferred. <laughs> the obsession is now carrying your terror radius. Okay. If it was like seconds. ten seconds or something, um, it could be interesting. And that does also not, affect uh, all, like all the effects four, that happen in the terror radius. Then happen on this new terror radius that is on the obsession. It's just not long enough. The second perk is infectious fright. We don't know how long yet. The cries of the unfaithful make your heart leap. Any survivors that are within the killer's terror radius, while another survivor is put into the dying state by basic attack, will yell and reveal their current location to the killer for a few seconds. Uh, can we talk about what this perk was called in uh, playtesting? <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. All right. Uh, this perk used to be called uh, Shit Your Pants. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because it makes people scared and they scream. It's a great name. I just won't allow it for the plague. No, <laughs> no. Uh, but that was great. That's a cool. We had a lot of fun playing with your pants. Keep the camel and, uh, Click it, stick honestly, it's, it's become one, one of my one. favorite perks to down somebody, see everybody yell, and then go yeah. after them. Nah. It's a great. Uh, it's a great combo perk. Absolutely. You want to combo it to get all the survivors to scream and. It's, a, it's interesting, yeah. but I don't know if it's big enough. Uh, and the final plague perk is corrupt intervention. The three generators located furthest from you are blocked by the entity for. A few seconds at the start of the trial, survivors cannot repair the generators for the duration. So, essentially, this makes it How so many that seconds? at the beginning of the game, there are less generators to patrol to increase the chances that you're going to find somebody to initiate a chance early in the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus, chance. either the survivor it's interesting waits for seconds. the uh, so keep saying a few seconds. Does he know that means two? Come out of the generator or has <laughs> to go two. closer to where the killer is. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it so, does. Very um, interesting. Joe Dos, thank you for the free so move. You get to give Come on, son. The case, thank you. None of them are signing are we, out. Are we done with the line. killer? I think we're done. Awesome. We're going to go to The first one's interesting, Jane but it depends how long for. I don't and the think anyone one's saw her yet. Well, the the, the second one's there. Yes. There she is. is. The reveal. Uh -huh. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the I know what you guys are thinking. Okay. Very quickly. Uh, so Jane <laughs> is... I'm, I'm going to say it. It's, uh, she's her uh, Oprah. Uh, our Oprah <laughs> character. So basically, she is uh, a flaming lizard. Thank you for the absorb. You guys keep coming up to hand. Look, it's like you guys are putting to once again create a, a TV show. You know, she she's a host, and she wanted that all her life. Um, she doesn't 
She doesn't necessarily <laughs> have the support to do it, but she fights for it. Uh, and she becomes really popular and famous uh, doing this, uh, this TV show, hosting shows for, um, to talk about uh, all sort of different subjects. So she's uh, quite known in our universe um, uh, as this host. Um, she, she works for that really hard and she uh, still have a, a troubled story and uh, uh, it takes, it's, it's really stressful to live her life. And uh, one, one night she does an interview that turns out catastrophic. Um, and uh, again, this will be her demise. So she, that night she, she goes out of the, uh, the studio and uh, with the, the tiredness of, that she feels, the, the catastrophic interviews and everything else, she uh, will, um, I'm losing my words, she <laughs> will fall asleep in her car and crash in the river and then disappear. Uh, so obviously it's at that point that the entity took her. And that's for Jane. That's Jane. Awesome. And Jane comes uh, Stitch with Cohen, three thank you for the 14 months. Of course. Months. Of course. Of course. Come so on. Look, it's like you, mm -hmm. it's a good to, I love you, you Drew. There we go. You. All right. Jane's first perk is solidarity. Sharing painful experiences has the power to heal. While injured, healing a survivor also heals you at a certain conversion rate. Yeah, that I was going to scream right away. Not 100%. What? Yeah, that yeah. being said. Not 100%. Okay. Not I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag here. What we have right now is 50%. So when you heal somebody, you also get 50% of that healing back on yourself. Mm -hmm. That's quite um, good. Which is pretty neat. Imagine that with Make a Choice. Uh, the second perk for Jane Romero is Poised. Uh, achieving goals boosts your confidence. After a generator is completed, <laughs> that you leave no scratch marks for 10 seconds. Uh, I oh, guess that's shit. good for uh, people who like to do their yeah, gen okay. scoot away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the last perk for Jane is Wait for it. Oh, head man. on. When your mind is set, there better be no one standing in your way. After standing in a locker for three seconds, the perk activates. While the perk is activated, perform a rush action to leave a locker to stun the killer for three seconds if they're standing within range. Three and seconds causes though. the exhausted status effect. If that's, and it can if be it's instant, while exhausted. that'd be so this is, ridiculous. This is, this is the locker stun perk. Finally. Finally, it's finally here. We uh, still, you, there's still a lot of uh, a lot of requirements to get that stun down. Right, you you have to be hiding a locker for a certain amount of time. Three seconds. It has to be within a, a very certain range. I don't expect that this is going to be too easy to pull off all the time. No. But I really am looking forward to watching people try. The idea is to create exciting, tense moment with the lockers. Mm. Not um, for it to just be this you know, stupid thing you Lockers are there and are quite interesting and we want to see them used more in an interesting situation. Yeah, that'd be so, insane. Uh, if you could just use that every uh, time you go into a locker, that'd perk. be insane. Yeah. Apply it directly to the killer's That'd be broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, anyways, that's it's a interesting, lot of information. Though. The way I can see that working is you're getting chased, you go into a locker, the killer doesn't know which locker you're in, he picks one of them, you're not in that one, he goes that one, three seconds are done, bang. PTB when? That's what it looks like it'll work on. That's the real question. So, PTB will release sometime this week. Sometimes this week. Yay! Okay. There you go. So, in the meantime, you guys are going to be able to test everything that I just showed you The mic's a bit weird, isn't it? Have you heard the white noise? Then got that set up right. changes. Uh, and something about uh, uh, Voltaire, I think, well. of the 25 bits. The lock and bash mm -hmm. is another lemon face. included nerve in the patch. So, nurse. Um, you guys are going to be it's able a, to test. Please give you can us use feedback. Uh, you can use it just in general you know, uh, to make the locker play you have, you guys have uh, to work a bit better. Um, so, if you go into a locker, basement saves. Basement saves. If you both jump into a locker and he picks up a locker, he goes to your locker, you jump out at him. It's going to be decent, that I think. It's going to be really good for basement saves. Okay, so you see the three of us today talking about the chapter. Obviously, it's it's a big team that's behind the chapter. So I wanted to thank them all. I mean, you'll see their artwork. It's it's amazing. It's a great chapter. Can't wait for you guys to play with it. Thank you so much. What did they say? I was talking then because I, I thought they were just kind of summing it up. You said something about Tolitons? They changed your Tolitons again. But they're not showing it. Uh, Dirt Fox, thank you for the 12 month. Blue Snake, thank you for the Prime. You both get to give Kamos and Lucky, thank you for the opportunity. A whole year already. Keep up the amazing work. Appreciate it, man. Voltaire, thank you for the 25 bits as well. Unspecified Tolitons change coming. Okay. 
It definitely needs sawing. It going instantly is just silly. Uh, Smiley, thank you for the 500 bits. Whoops. Uh, and Future Pro, thank you for the Prime. You also get to keep the comments and leakage. Thank you, Katsu, for tuning in. Once again, shall I? Are they finished?